Ellen Schmidt was invited to come and share some of her art of writing and song and to talk about her mother, Norma Farber, and her mother's influence on her own writing. Norma passed away in the 1980s, was a prolific writer and author of a number of books of poetry, over 20 books of children's uh, poetry and story, and also a classical singer. There is an award of distinction for the Norma Farber, first book of poetry awarded each year, which helps to honor the legacy of Norma's writing. Although I did not have the privilege of knowing Norma, I do have the great privilege to know and share friendship with Ellen Schmidt, her daughter. As an aside, uh, I once, about 11 years ago, was sent to one of her open mics for sharing music and spoken word. And it was her warm, welcoming nature that kept me coming back and kept me encouraged and inspired to find what I love to do in writing. It was something different for me and others, and she made it real and totally accepted. And I know many hundreds of other singer-songwriters and poets and storytellers that would say the same about her in giving them a warm, welcoming foundation. And on behalf of the hundreds, I'd like to thank her for her generosity and encouragement and grace. Ellen grew up in Brookline. As a girl, she loved sledding. And she remembers hearing her mother practice her singing. And she would sometimes hand out programs for her mother's uh, performance at Jordan Hall. Ellen was listening and she was inspired as she was watching and listening her mother. She went on to work in a diversity of uh, jobs, including a sailing counselor, a bugler, a teacher, a junior engineer, a technical writer, a musician, an open mic host, a producer, songwriter, and performing in nursing homes and hospitals and, set and settings like that. Ellen has recorded four CDs of her original songs with Seth Connolly and two others with Jake Kensinger, her longtime partner in Two for the Show. She has also collaborated with her daughter, Wendy Santis, who is a writer and a performer. Ellen's married to Alan Schmidt here today, with whom she raised a blended family of seven children, and they now have 10 grandchildren. When I asked Ellen, how she would suggest best inspiring our children to explore and find their creativity. Ellen said, I think we have to be relaxed, not apply pressure. We need to expose them to a variety of opportunities, but not push. If parents live their own lives creatively, making time for whatever their bliss is, their children will learn from that. So, I appreciate that advice and have learned from her and appreciate what she can share in learning from her mother and sharing her mother's art as well as her own today. And I'd like to ask you to please join me in giving a warm welcome to Ellen Schmidt. It's been quite a journey for me to go back and look at some of my mother's writings and think more about her life. The older I get, the more I have perspective and understanding about the life she lived. Here, I don't know if you can see them, but there's two pictures of her. One uh, sitting with uh, what is my favorite children's book of hers, How Does It Feel to Be Old? And I'll be reading from that shortly. And up on the wall is a lovely uh, picture of uh, Wendy, my daughter, and uh, how, how does it feel to be old was inspired by uh, a question asked by a granddaughter to her grandmother, how does it feel to be old? My mother did so many amazing things, and again, I, I reflect on this uh, all the time. And uh, she actually started writing poems I think in her teens and had her first published poem in a Brookline newspaper, I grew up in Brookline, uh, when she was 15 and was writing ever since all kinds of things. 
For many years as an adult, she was published in the Christian Science Monitor, and of course we subscribed to that newspaper. And she would get the paper each day, she'd look at it and decide and say whether it was a good issue or a bad issue. <laughs> and so I learned about you know, sending things out and having them accepted or rejected. I, I learned that at a young age. And I think the first thing I remember in my own life is when I was about three years old and I heard her downstairs rehearsing with her accompanist and she sang all kinds of classical music and I would hum little melodies upstairs and uh, I would go, as Cheryl said, to performances of hers and hand out the programs. I'm going to read today from some favorite things of mine. There are a couple of poems, I'll read one now and one a little later, which I actually took and made songs of and recorded. This one is very special to me. It's called Make Me No Lazy Love. Make me no lazy love, no vague cirrus sweep of cloud talk. Make me a trove of trim twig words to keep. Proffer me no proof of the heart's magnitude, rather neat gravel stuff, weed bundles, chipped wood. The eyes take in with ease a leaf, a knot of bowl in boundless tracts of trees, uncomprehended whole. Crow calls from the grass uniquely specify the general air. We feel moths pass, but not the month July. Pebbles, puddles, straws, how they establish space. Make me no endless vows, move me from case to case. My mother died much too young, really. She ha had a stroke <clears throat> in 1983 and uh, was left alone for a while. No one knew, and she died in 1984. At that point, she had published tw uh, 20 children's books. She started writing children's books when she became a grandmother. This one is my favorite. How does it feel to be old? It's out of print, and we haven't been able to legally make copies, but I made some black and white copies that I have here. I'll read just a little bit from it. And the thing that's of interest to me is when she wrote this, she was younger than I am now. It was published when she was 70. How does it feel to be old? Very nice. I don't have to listen to parents' advice, such as watch where you step, don't slip on the ice, come in from the cold, take off your rubbers, now tie your shoe. Nobody's telling me what to do. If somebody does, I just don't hear. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> I please myself, make my own choice, Sometimes I miss my mother's voice and my father's way, so tall, so grand, of taking me firmly by the hand. Nobody's telling me, all the same, I'd like to be called by my childhood name. How does it feel to be old, quite brave, quite bold? I say what I choose, having nothing to lose by being a demon, taking a chance, no punishment. I can afford to be mean, cranky and mean, ranting and raving. I've nothing to get, no kiss, no reward for proper behaving. I come, I go, as though, as though nobody cared if I came or went. I'll scream if I will, and still and yet, nobody's made me cry in years. I miss the hug coming after the tears. And I'll read a little from the end. 
How does it feel to be old, in a rush, so much to be done, so few more years in which to do? It's hard to remember I once had all the time in the world to go up and down and around the world, travel to places great and small, continents near and countries far, China and Chinatown, Arctic tundra, Australian bush, the Amazon and Zanzibar. If I were five or even 10, I could live my life all over again, but I'm not and I can't, and I'm going to just live out the rest that there is as I must. How does it feel to be old? Quite late. There's somewhere I'm getting to soon. I haven't been told. Not school, not a playground, nor a house of a friend, not the moon. Wherever it is, I'll open a gate. I'll be coming at last to an end, or a start, I'm not quite clear. I'll end what I've loved to be doing on Earth, my life right here. Since the day I was slapped on my bottom at birth, I'll finish my now and my here. Remember the stories I told you, my dear. And nothing surprising need come of the fact. Have you noticed I'm shorter almost than you? I'm shrinking. You're stretching. What else is new? Well, sun keeps rising. Journeys of planets continue exact. Wind keeps blowing. Sky stays wide. Soon you'll be knowing that grandma has died while you are still growing in inches and pride. Thank you. So when I started writing songs, and I didn't start writing them seriously till I was almost 50. I wanted to write a song about that book, and I used many of the words that she used in that book. And when we'd visit her in the hospital after her stroke, and we'd read to her from her writings, I always read from How Does It Feel to Be Old. So this is the song. She wrote it for my daughter, how does it feel to be old? Written by my mother, a grandma's tale she told. A story filled with memories, with honesty and humor, some loneliness but no regrets. These words were written to her. Inches and pride, inches and pride, look how you're growing in inches and pride. That skip of generations, that special love they shared, they would sit and talk all night, no bedtime rules, who cared? Look at the family album and in the mirror too staring at those photographs she sees herself in you inches and in pride inches and in pride daily you're growing in inches and in pride She wakens at the morning light from childhood memories called. Stretch her legs to touch the floor, careful not to fall. She'll eat her meals just when she likes and share them if you wish. Draw you pictures as she did for me. 
her fingers shake a bit. Inches and in pride, inches and in pride, how quickly you're growing in inches and in pride. No need to wear a watch at all, who cares about the time? There's many things she'd like to do, and many she has done. She knows she's on a journey to some place that's quite new, but you'll just keep on growing. There's part of her in you. Inches and in pride, inches and in pride, you'll keep on growing in inches and in pride. Soon you will know your grandma has died while you were still growing in inches and in pride. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, now what I'm going to do is read a poem of hers and read uh, the song that I wrote and sang using her words. I'm the oldest of four children, and the third child, Tom, my brother, is a writer, and he has a publishing company now, too, and he's been wonderful in forwarding my mother's work. But I do remember back when he was a two-year-old, and he was one of those really active two-year-olds two year with a temper. And uh, when he didn't get his way, he'd get down on his knees and bang his head on the floor, and my mother would just kind of throw up her hands. But uh, Tom has gone on to be a wonderful writer and teacher at Cal and Berkeley. And, uh, but my mother wrote this poem for Tom at one point. Lullaboy, my bearded man, where's the cradle fits you now? Where's the treetop, where's the bough? Lullaboy, my bearded man, cradles crack, bowls remain. Would he were a boy again? Lullaboy, my bearded man, how I wonder how you fare, soaring up what flight of air, lullaboy, my bearded man. Stars fall down, stairs remain, would you were a boy again. Lullaboy, my bearded man, some are born, some beget. Would I know you if we met, lullaboy, my bearded man. Should I keep you if I could, safe from knife that whittles wood, whole from rope that ravels pain. Would you were my boy again. And now I'll do my song. Lala boy, my bearded man, <clears throat> where's the cradle fits you now? Where's the treetop? Where's the bow? Lala boy, my bearded man. Cradles crack and bowls remain. Would he were a boy? Again. Lala boy, my bearded man, how I wonder what you fare, soaring up what flight of air. Lala boy, my bearded man, stars fall down, stairs 
remain Would you were a boy again Stars fall down and stairs remain Would you were a boy again Lala boy, my bearded man Some are born and some beget Would I know you if we met Lala boy, my bearded man Should I keep you if I could Save from life that whittles wood Hold from rope that ravels pain Would you were my boy again Would you were my boy again Thank you. And now I'm very pleased to announce uh, the fact that there is a book of my mother's forthcoming. My mother wrote a lot about my father over time. They had a, a wonderful, wonderful relationship. And in 1973, in March of 1973, my father passed away. And she proceeded to write a book entitled Year of Reversible Loss. And she went month by month, marking the seasons, noticing nature, things happening, and dealing with her loss and trying to come to terms with it. My brother Tom has gotten together with another publisher, and this book is coming out in the spring. Over on the table, I have copies of the cover, or the words that the, uh, the reviews that are on the, on, on the jacket. So you can take those away with you if you're interested. Uh, it's gotten good reviews so far. And um, so I had a copy of this manuscript all these years, but soon after my dad died, it was, it was hard to read it, you know, and I've gone back and looked at it. And I'm going to just read from the end of it. It's called Year of Reversible Loss. I propose loss as a circling, an unnumbered circling, if you will, around the universe journey, during which the past is repeatedly come upon, love and the lover thus recoverable. I propose, in absence of evidence to the contrary, that time moves so as to come back upon itself. The lost lover moves in time, coming back upon the hours of love, the beloved. We are making the same journey, you and I, this circumambience of ours. Sooner or later, if you dawdle or I hurry, one of us again overtakes or intersects the other. We go the same ways, backwards or forwards, no matter, for we follow the sphere. We travel the great circles of the sphere and are never farther from each other than the universal antipodes, and often closer, even abreast. Now from the other side of time, Speak to me as the whale sings across that curvature of water which confines sound so it carries halfway round the churning world. Let our wide abyss become a room. You need not raise your voice against a loud universe. No other wavelength curves through distance like your word. I listen for your undertone. 
This spherical shape of time bodes well for the future. Separation is no infinitely stretched out course measured in days, months, anniversaries. It brings us round again, exactly, to a meeting point, to just where we were for the thousandth time, or the trillionth. Time itself is the one sphere. Only the, n only the number of times we circle it are numberless. Thank you all very much. Hey, 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 hey,